What's up guys, this is another Monday Night Rewind podcast where we go back 20 years to the Monday Night Roars and review episodes of Raw and Nitro from 90, or from 20 years ago, so this year of 1997. And this week we're going to October 13th, 1997 with Raw 229 and Nitro 109. And so as usual, we will start with Raw. And so this Raw, um, like when the show starts off, it's uh, showing a bunch of like video of the history of the Legion of Doom. Because they have a big match coming up tonight. And so throughout the show, they keep pl- playing little like video clips of like certain things of the LOD. So like I don't re- remember all the certain stuff. Like I know one was like winning the tag titles at um, Wembley in 92. Their manager, Paul Ellering, and just all sorts of different uh, stuff of what makes up the LOD. And they show little clips throughout the night of that. Um, but they're talking about uh, tonight how they have a tag match for the tag team titles. And that the match is... Um, that if they win, they get the tag titles, or if they lose, they're going to retire from wrestling. So it's a big match for that, and as you could probably assume by that, you know how it goes. Um, but then the actual show starts up, and it starts with Vince, Mc- uh, Vince McMahon in the ring, and he uh, is going to do an interview with Bret Hart, and so Bret Hart comes out with the whole Hart Foundation. And Vince starts off by asking Bret about you know his opinions on going to be facing Sean at Survivor Series and his loss to Bret, uh, Triple H last week. Before he can really say anything, they get interrupted by um, DX in the locker room. And so Sean starts to reference the match from last week and the stuff he did in it, and he mentions that he knows Canada, as in your nose, obviously, since he did the thing with the old Canadian flag up his nose, and it plays that video of him sticking the, in the, the flag up his nose and moving around and stuff that he did. And then Triple H says, you know, that he's better than Brett and uh, plays the footage of him winning the match from last week or whatever, so they're each doing their whole thing. Showing that they're better and stuff. And then uh, Brett ends up challenging uh, the group of degenerates to come down and face him. And from that, Sean and Triple H end up saying, Hey, you, we're ge- degenerates and we're Generation X, so we're Degeneration X. Obviously, that's not exactly how they say it, but he does a whole breakdown of degenerates, Generation X, and then equals Degeneration X. And so that's how they come up with DX and their whole name and stuff. And then ends off the promo saying that you make the rules and we will break them. So the kind of like their famous tagline or whatever. And then immediately after it cuts away from that, uh, the Nation of Domination ends up coming out and interrupting, or I guess not really interrupting, because then the thing with uh, DX just ended, but then it interrupts the whole thing with Brett and stuff, and so it ends that part. And from that, that leads into our next match, or first match of the night, I should say, which is Owen Hart versus Kama. And so um, Owen is the Intercontinental Champion. And so as the match is getting ready to start, DX ends up actually coming out, to the ring out to ring sign stuff so they're out there obviously to cause problems and stuff and then uh the match starts up as they're coming out and to begin uh kama ends up attacking owen from behind because owen's distracted by dx coming out and so with that kama gets the early upper hand and as that they start fighting stuff uh dx or sean and triple h end up walking over to commentary and um take the headphones off of i think vince and jr And they uh, put them on and then just start talking and they're eating bananas the whole time. Just sitting on top of the commentary table. And so the match continues on. And like I said, really the match, it's not really doing much. It's mostly showing Brett, uh, sorry, Sean and Triple H at commentary just sitting there in their comments and stuff. But not really much is going on in the ring. Obviously there's a match though. Uh, But Sean ends up getting up on the table and he starts doing the crotch chop towards Brett. And of course that pisses Brett off and Brett starts going towards uh, Sean. But then as he's turning around the corner of the ring, um, the Nation of Domination ends up coming up and starts attacking Brett from behind. So there's a big whole fight thing between the Nation and the Heart Foundation. And so they're just all fighting with each other. And so the DX members get in and start taking like cheap shots on the members. And I know um, as they're beating down on Brett, Sean's like lays down on the ground and puts his hands up on his chin like a you know little kid does or something. Just sitting there watching with enjoyment and stuff. And just doing all sorts of stuff. But because of all the whole big mess that goes on or whatever with the big fight, the match ends up ending in a DQ. They don't announce a winner, but I just know it's DQ'd because they all just start all fighting with each other. We then have a little interview backstage with the Godwins. And they're talking about how they're putting up um, their titles after just winning them last week because they're that confident. And that they want to do them against the LOD with the stipulation because they want to get rid of the LOD once and for all. And then that leads into our mini match for the night, which is um, Tarantula and Mosaic 
versus Max Mini and Nova, which I know this match took place at Helen or the, say Helen, so Bad Blood, this like same people took were in the match. And then I found out that Nova was actually uh, Masquerita Sagrada, I think it is, which is like one of the most famous mini wrestlers ever. Um, so I thought that was kind of interesting because he's, I don't remember if it, can't remember if he was in last week, what, if it was last week, because like I said, I can't remember if he, there was a match or not with him or this week, but he was kind of like the standout, even though Max is like the star of the WWF's minis. But Nova was really impressive and stuff. Like I said, I feel like it was last week or something, but you never know. But as usual with the mini matches, I find them very entertaining and they're funny. And just all the moves that the little guys do and stuff is just hilarious. Um, at one point, Max ends up doing a flip um, out of the ring. Um, and his feet, like, he, I forget which one. It's I just know he does it, obviously, to the bad minis in this match. But I don't know if it's both of them or just one. But he does it out of the ring and he lands... Or they're on the side with the ram. And so as he's landing on top of the guy, his feet just start like slamming like really hard onto the ramp. So it's a really loud noise. So he kind of like overshot too much and land like hit too far at like the top of the guy. And so when he came down, most of his body was above the guy and his, like I said, his feet ended up slamming. Well, then to go with that, Nova ends up doing a uh, similar maneuver and he goes out and uh, follows uh, Max. But um, this time his head hits the bottom of the ramp with the move that he does. And so they both they both just overshot the opponent. Like they still hit the opponent but shot way too high up on him. And so they both, you know, were too far up and they both crashed onto the ramp and both got hurt by it. But in the end, Max ends up getting the pin on Mosaic. Um, and he does does it with some maneuver that I have no clue what it was. I had no clue what it was called. They didn't mention it and it was just some thing i don't know what it was but max ends up getting the win so he's he's still shown you know to be the top person in the mini division then from there we get a shotgun saturday night replay from the last week or i believe is the last week and it's the joining of billy gunn and road dog together for the first time so billy gunn is obviously at this point rockabilly or whatever with the honky tonk man and the road dog ends up coming out and uh offering billy gunn to join him and stuff but honky dog's like no you're with me and everything and uh, Billy Gunn ends up taking the guitar and hitting Honky Talk on the head with it and joining with the Road Dog. So we're getting to be getting of the New Age Outlaws there. Then we get what's supposed to be our next match of Flash Funk versus Shawn Michaels. But as the match starts and Flash Funk's out, out in the ring, uh, Kane ends up coming down with Paul Bear. And so you'll be getting this a lot now where match begins to start. The lights go out and Kane comes out and just destroys stuff. Um, so Kane hits the choke slam and then the tombstone pile driver on Flash Funk. And then Paul Bear gets the microphone and starts cutting a promo. And he's talking about how uh, Kane's going to be taking out every superstar until Undertaker decides to face him. You know, he's going to face his, he wants to face his brother, which Undertaker refuses to. But he does that and then they both leave. And then D has their disappear wherever i don't know through the back or off the ramp or whatever um dx comes walking out to the ring and sean gets in the ring and pins uh flash funk and then triple h gets in and counts the three so it takes place of the ref and then china goes over and rings the bell and rick rude gets on the microphone and announces that sean michaels is the winner of the match so sean michaels pulled out a you know cheap win because kane did all the stuff and then they leave and out the whole time they're walking up the ramp they're just crotch chopping the fans and everything the next up we get another, I didn't write these all down, we get the uh, little video clip like I mentioned of the Legion of Doom and this time it was on their uh, summer, uh, winning the tag titles at SummerSlam 1991 I guess. Oh no, this yeah, they won the tag titles at uh, SummerSlam 91 and then Wembley was 92. And that leads into our next match of Skull and 8-Ball um, coming out with the DOA, so despite Disciples of Apocalypse, and they're taking on the Truth Commission, and it's Recon and Sniper of the Truth Commission, and so this match was really boring, so nothing much went on and nothing entertaining, it was just four big guys just moving slow in the ring pretty much. Then at one point, as one of the DOA members gets thrown into the ropes, the Jackal pulls down on one of the ropes, causing the DOA member to fall out of the ring, and that causes the DQ, so DOA ends up getting the win there, like I said, I don't, I don't know the difference between Skull and Abel. I, I can't tell the difference between them, but it was one of them. And then because of that, all hell breaks loose and the interrogator ends up, so Kurgan, ends up getting into the ring and starts going crazy on everybody. And so, the, as I mentioned, that's how it ends and the DOA got the win. We then go to hour two and it starts with Vince McMahon in the ring doing 
interview with Stone Cold, so Stone Cold comes out, and I'm um, trying to get Stone Cold to sign the papers, and he can, if he signs them, he can have a mat, his first match, whatever, at Survivor Series, and then uh, Stone Cold doesn't believe or trust Vince and stuff, so he makes sure Vince signs the paper first, and Vince does, and then Stone Cold start, grabs the paper and starts, like, you know, doing his celebrating type thing, like, you know, put his hands up in the air up on the turnbuckle and stuff. Like, he's getting ready to leave and everything. But it's like, well, you have to sign that paper for also, or you don't get the match. And Stone Cold was like, you know, I don't need the sign, but we can uh, shake on it. And so, of course, Vince is really hesitant to shake his hand because that can allow Austin to get his hands on him. But they do the handshake and move on from there. And then he's mentioned, uh, Stone Cold mentions how he interfered at Bad Blood so that he could be Owen for the Intercontinental title. So that way Owen would keep it and uh, Farouk would wouldn't be allowed to get it and with in reference to that the nation of domination ended up coming out on the um, ramp to interrupt and so stone cold challenges um to a fight and everything and Farouk says if you want to fight i'll send you you know a fight or whatever and so he sends rocky maivia to the ring to fight with stone cold and as the rock gets in the ring austin hits him with uh, one stunner and then rolls out through the crowd or goes out through the crowd and stuff because the nation comes to the ring and stuff so that was kind of like our first introduction of stone cold and the rock kind of fighting together but obviously stone cold got the upper hand at the very, or very easily then next up we got another legion of doom video and this time I was talking about their entrance at Survivor's or SummerSlam 1992 so the one at Wembley and the, how they came in on motorcycles and stuff like that and then that leads into our commercial with our laser tag commercial with Sable and this time she wins and she uh frees one of the minis I don't know which mini it was she was saving but um she frees a mini wrestler from like a cage or something with the win that she gets and from there goes into a light heavyweight match and this is Brian Christopher taking on Tajiri so I think this is like one of Tajiri's first appearances and he's like a really young wrestler at this point he's wearing blue pants which a lot of people do with the Japanese flag on it so a lot of people from Japan wear those pants so he's like I said a really new wrestler but he is really good in like I want to say like amazing but I doubt it's really amazing but he's really good in entertaining and the moves and stuff that he does throughout the match but because of his whole thing of like I, I want to say karate but I don't know if that's exactly but like martial arts skill he's doing a lot of kicks and stuff throughout the match at one point I thought it was really funny Tajiri ends up getting a hold of Brian Christopher's arms like I don't know how to describe how he did it at all like I was when I wrote this down I was trying to figure out how like you would describe it and I couldn't come up with it but he has a hold of Brian Christopher's arms and he's just like starts rolling around the ring in like a big circle around the ring and I just thought it was so inter um, so funny and entertaining. So it's almost like the alligator roll that like Luke Harper does and stuff. But it's he just had a hold of his arms and they were just rolling around the ring and it looked really funny and cool. Of course that got all uh, Brian Christopher all whatever combobulated and stuff. But to end the match off, Brian Christopher ends up reversing a roll up by Tajiri, but he reverses it into another roll up and grabs a hold of the tights and is able to get the pin on Tajiri for that. So Brian Christopher gets the win there. Then next up we get a Jim Cornette rant, so as he's started last week or whatever, and this time he rants on a guy named Phil Mushnick who works at TV Guy and I guess wrote an article and stuff about wrestling and everything. And so as they're like leading into the thing, uh, Jim Cornette, or Vince McMahon, sorry, at commentary ends up saying that he thinks Phil Mushnick is a no good son of a bitch. So that's the first time you get to hear Vince say one, something like that, and two, him give an opinion of some guy that's, you know, talking crap about the wrestling business. But Jim Cornette's talking about how, um, Phil Mushnick ends up uh, attacks wrestling and is trying to get it taken off TV and that by doing that he's a also attacking wrestling fans and saying that all wrestling fans are idiots and of course in the article with the recent events he uses brian pillman's death to try and use it to indict wrestling so like you know show that stuff like brian pillman happens to a bunch of wrestlers and then that they all end up end up dying at early age and stuff like that and that's one reason why it needs to stop and of course to end off the promo he just ends up saying that go to hell phil mushnick or whatever is his last line of the promo Next up, we get a match of Savio Vey coming out with the Los Bariquas, and he's taking on Goldust coming out with Marlena. So as the match is uh, starting off and stuff, commentary's talking, and uh, Vince McMahon is starts uh, making comments or whatever, attacking Hulk Hogan's new movie, and mentioning his bad acting, and of course they bring up uh, no holds bar and stuff like that and i forget which person because there's obviously vince jr and uh, lawler at commentary but one of them mentioned something about no holds bar more like no money allowed or something i forget what it is like 
or no revenue allowed or something like that. They just mentioned how it doesn't make money and it costs Vince a lot of money that he didn't really get back or anything. And how Hogan said if it didn't make the money back, that Vince could keep the money or he would pay back something. I forget exactly how he said it. But Vince is like, I'm still waiting on that money or something. But into the match, uh, the prequels end up, of course, with them being out ringside as people do. They end up grabbing a hold of Goldust's leg and distract him and Savio uh, super kicks in Goldust as he turns around from the distraction. And because of that, the refs end up sending the break, Los Brequas to the back. And then back in the match, um, at one point there, Savio's on the outside of the ring and he starts start uh, starts to like corner Marlena between the ring and himself. And uh, Goldust ends up coming up to attack from behind. But as uh, he's doing that, Savio notices and Savio delivers a roundhouse kick to Goldust's face, taking him out. Then back in the ring, Goldust ends up hitting Savio with Marlena's purse because she threw him, or he got the purse or whatever, because she took, um, so if you know Marlena, she, at this point in time and stuff, she always had a cigar, and she, I'm pretty sure it was a fake cigar, but she took it and threw it up in the ring, well, um, the ref ended up noticing, and goes to pick it up, and is, like, messing with it and trying to give it back to her and stuff, and while he's picking it up, she runs around the ring, hands gold dust her purse, then runs all the way back, the ref comes over and starts, you know, trying to give the cigar back to her and stuff, and during that time, gold dust ends up hitting Savio with the purse, and then, of course, commentary mentions that, you know, there's been bricks in that purse in the past and stuff like that and everything, but because of that, uh, Goldust ends up getting the pin on Savio in the win, and immediately after that, the Bur Los Bariquas end up running out to try and help Savio again. And right after the match, Jerry Lawler ends up going over and picking up the purse. He goes, I'm going to find out what's inside the purse, but he never ends up opening it. At least on the episode, you never see him open the purse or anything to see what was inside. Um, then we have a commercial, and I wrote this on because I thought it was funny. It's a commercial for the new Jax action figures. And I thought it was kind of cool because um, we, me and my brother, had a bunch of the figures. We had almost all of them from the set. I think there were like two or something we didn't have. I just thought that was cool seeing the old toys we used to have back in the day. So we had toys you know, all the way back from 97 at least that I remember. Then next up we get a match of... Triple H with of course coming out with DX and he's taking on the Patriot and so um, the Patriot's coming out onto the ramp for the entrance and as soon as he gets to where the ramp part begins um, Rick Rude ends up coming up from behind, behind him and he like taps on Patriot's shoulder and Patriot turns around and Rick Rude th has a cup of coffee and he throws it in Patriot's face and then hits Patriot with the briefcase. And Shawn Michael gets on the microphone and he announces because of the stuff that uh, Triple H is the winner. And with ain't being angry at that or whatever, Sergeant Slaughter ends up coming out to lay down the law against DX. And as he's talking and stuff, as they like to do, Shawn and Triple H were hiding behind Shawn's European Championship. So like, of course, to like guard from the spit and stuff. And so he ends up saying that Triple H will have a match tonight against the opponent of his choosing. And while he's doing this, uh, I forget where it's Triple H or Shawn Michaels or something, but one of them like motion at Rick Rude and Rick Rude goes walking to the back. And so uh, Sergeant Slaughter ends up announcing the opponent for Triple H and it is Ahmed Johnson. And so he ends up coming out to have a match with Triple H. But as the match is getting ready, the starter, he's making his way to the ring. The Nation of Domination ends up uh, running out and starts attacking Ahmed because obviously they still uh, have the feud or whatever with him. And then while that's going on, the D um, DX ends up running to the top of the ramp and sitting down on the edge of the like whole uh, upper, I forget what they call it. It's like the ramp thing though, the entrance area, how it's raised up. Um, they end up sitting on the side of that and have like bags of popcorn and stuff. And so they're just sitting there watching the fight of Na the nation on Ahmed. But as that's going on, as the nation is attacking Ahmed, they keep attacking his hand. They take like the bandage off and stuff. And the camera kind of zooms in on his wound, but it's not bleeding or anything, but it doesn't look too good. But so they're like stomping on his hand and stuff. Well, as that's going on, um, the Legion of Doom and Ken Shamrock come running out to help Ahmed because obviously they have their whole little group thing going on and stuff. And because of that, DX ends up getting mad and angry and they're like throwing their popcorn down and stuff and they get up and walk to the back, ending that whole segment. And from there, we get our main event for the night, which is the Legion of Doom versus the Godwins, or the Godwins come out with Uncle, Uncle Cletus, and this is for the Tag Team Championship. Um, so, of course, as they come out, the LOD, or the LOD comes out, the crowd is, like, so much behind them, they're... You know, as they call it, the Road Warrior Pop or something like that, I believe is what a thing was called or whatever. Where they're just such a popular team that the crowd just loves them and everything. But as the match gets started, um, we quickly find out that it's a really boring match. So again, four big guys just fighting with each other, moving really slow and doing boring stuff. Um, at one point in the match, Hawkins up being uh, getting double teamed by um, Phineas and Henry. 
Um, but he's able to counter it and doing a double clothesline on him. And so that's kind of a common maneuver for tag team stuff when they're getting double teamed. Animal gets attacked on the outside and thrown into the ring steps. And he's injured or whatever by that and stuff. And so he's walked out by officials. So like ring or referees and stuff like that. And then back in the ring, Henry ends up hitting the slop drop on the referee. So it takes the ref out. So it allows Henry and Phineas to, you know, uh, pretty much do whatever they want to Hawk because the ref's not there to do anything. Well, as Animal's being walked up the ramp, he sees up on the Titantron the, the this is happening so he turns around and runs back to help out hawk and so they start beating up on the godwins and getting set up for the doomsday device but as whichever i think eh, i can't remember which one goes up to the top rope but as he's doing that or i guess it's hawk i guess um uncle, uncle cletus ends up coming up and hitting hawk and knocking him off the top rope with the horseshoe and so after that, Henry ends up grabbing a hold of Animal and is holding him up for like Cletus did and Uncle Cletus come, had come in the ring at this point. And he's got the horseshoe and he's getting ready to hit Animal. But of course, as he's going to hit him, he ends up ducking and uh, Uncle Cletus ends up hitting Henry instead. And then Phineas goes to try to do a pile driver on Animal, but Hawk is back up by this point and he ends up jumping off the top row, uh, doing a top rope clothesline onto Phineas, knocking him out. And then Hawk's able to get the pin on Phineas from that and the LOD gets the titles and so they're not retiring and everything. So it's all fun and celebration and then they leave the ring and the Godwins are in there and they start like arguing, yelling at Uncle Cletus. And they start attacking him then, and they end up, like, breaking his nose or something. His nose is bleeding a real lot, so um, he got a bloody nose, at least, from it. But I think they say, the commentary says, oh, no, he broke his nose and stuff. But that's how Raw Raw ends. And so, overall, it wasn't that interesting of Raw. Like, a lot of matches were boring. Like, the stuff with DX was fun and interesting, because we're actually getting, like, the real official DX now. And a lot of their antics and everything. But other than that... Raw wasn't that interesting. So now we'll move on to Nitro. And again, this is Nitro 109. This took place in Tampa, Florida. And the show kicks off with Hulk Hogan, Eric Bischoff, and Macho Man coming out to the ring to do a promo. And of course, as we're walking out, or as they're walking out, you can notice that Macho Man is wearing a neck brace. And uh, there's commentary is mentioning that he must have got that from the attack last week. Um, of course, then as they get in the ring, I can't remember if it's Hulk Hogan or Bischoff, whatever. One of them goes out and comes back in. And they're holding up a sign or posters or, and the cameras are showing the posters out in the crowd for Assault on Devil's Island, which is a new Hulk Hogan movie that's coming out and what I assume is what Vince was ref referencing in Raw. And with stuff like that, um, Eric's saying, you know, they don't want signs, you know, like the Devil Island signs or whatever. They, they don't want signs like that at um, the World Series. He says something else, I don't know, if like playoff things or something like that. Or the competition at the end is like, we don't want that, you know, kind of saying it with like a tone to his voice, like, we're telling you no, but yes, go do it type thing. Um, but then they start talking, I think it's like Hogan and stuff, and he's saying, of course, that he's going to get his belt back from Piper, because obviously Piper ended up uh, having the title from the end of last week where he fought, or was able to like fly off the NWO or whatever by swinging the belt around. So Hogan wants to get his belt back, and then that Piper must pay for allowing, you know, what happened to Macho Man with his neck brace and stuff, that he's not a good um, commissioner or whatever if he allows stuff like that to happen. We then go into our first match of the night, which is Psychosis taking on Eddie Guerrero, who is the Cruiserweight Champion, and this is for the Cruiserweight title. Um, so towards the beginning, Psychis Psychosis ends up going, or at the beginning, Psychosis ends up going for a drop kick to Eddie, who's standing in the corner. But Eddie notices and moves, and so Psychosis just kind of fall, like flies up against the turnbuckle like upside down almost because he was doing the drop kick so his feet are up higher than his head and later on in the match psychosis ends up hitting a centon backsplash from the top rope onto eddie guerrero on the floor and because that both were injured obviously eddie from bidding being hit and then psychosis starts like selling um injury or whatever getting injured from doing that move and then a little bit later on psychosis ends up going up to the top rope but Eddie's able to get up and he runs over and hits the ropes, which causes psychosis to get crotched on the top rope. And then Eddie goes up and does a superplex onto psychosis. And then from there, he gets up and goes up top 
to the top rope and does the frog splash off and is able to get the pin off of that. And then as um, before Eddie leaves the ring, he goes over to the psychosis and starts trying to pull his mask off. Um, but after he can't get it after like a few seconds, uh, he just lets it go and leaves the ring. Next up, we get our another Mike Tenay report on the luchadors. And this time he was reporting on the history and meaning of the lucha mask. So it's again showing where the um, it's believed lucha mask started from and then what it means to people. And it showed Rey Mysterio Sr. So Rey Mysterio Jr.'s uncle that he was named after. And it starts off like because Rey Mysterio is sitting there and his uncle's next to him. And his uncle has like the mask up in front of his face like just holding him. Just talking about it. And then he pulls it down saying talking about how you know he was in a match and lost his mask or whatever. Which of course ends up happening to Rey and a bunch of the luchadors later on in WCW. And then from there we go back to Nitro and we get a Mean Gene interview in the ring with Roddy Piper. So it obviously comes out and Roddy and Piper starts off by saying you know that he's the boss and whatever he says around here goes. And that what happened to Savage last week is what he calls justice. And uh, then he starts talking about the um, Hogan's title and stuff and he says he mentions like uh, like State Farm or whatever or Allstate or something. But um, Hogan's like uh, or he says that the title is like all state it's in good hands or something and with it being in good hands that means Hogan can't defile it such as playing air guitar on it or spray painting it and stuff like that and that Hogan can't defile it when it's he doesn't have it and he does say that Hall and Ash will defend their titles tonight but since Kevin Nash is injured Six will be replacing Kevin Nash in the match. Then we get our first Nitro Girls segment of nine this time, and they're dancing on the ramp. And that leads into our next match of Steven Regal taking on Steve Mongo McMichaels. And so again, this was a pretty boring match, um, but McMichaels is using just a lot of power moves and Regal's doing a lot of technical moves, like, so, you know, just trying to, like, combat each other with their strengths. But in the end, Steve Mongo McMichaels gets the win with the Tombstone Pile Driver. And then immediately following the match, Mean Gene's out on the ramp with it, um, Deborah to interview her. And they're talking about how Jeff Jarrett has left WCW. So this is obviously getting ready for him to go back to WWF. So I don't know what happened there or not. But because of that, Mongo ends up getting the automatic win for the match at Halloween Havoc. Which means with their stipulation they had that Deborah has to leave WCW. But Deborah says that she has a replacement instead and it's going to be a big surprise for Mongo and so um, just wait to see that. Next up we get a match of Yuji Nagata coming out with Sonny Ono and he's taking on Chris Jericho again. Jericho coming out with his WWF music. They mentioned that Yuji Nagata will be taking on the Ultimo Dragon at Halloween Havoc. So again Sonny Ono is still trying to take down Ultimo Dragon. Um, at one point in the match uh, Nagata is, is like kicking Chris Jericho and stuff and he at one point he throws a kick and it ends up hitting Chris Jericho in the face and I'll, I don't know if obviously if it hurt or not. Like you can see it make contact with his face and then Jericho starts like saying stuff but it looks like he may have just been calling a move or something but I don't know if he really got hurt from that or not um but then at one point Sonny Ono tries to kick Chris Jericho but Jericho ends up there on the outside of the ring at this point but Jericho ends up catching Sonny Ono's legs and then like is like holding around you know like playing to the crowd or whatever and stuff and then he ends up just shoving Sonny Ono down and then back in the match later on Jer Chris Jericho ends up going up to the top rope but as he's getting ready to jump off Sonny Ono comes up and grabs onto his leg tripping him off the top rope which allows Nagata to get the reverse figure four on Chris Jericho and causing Chris Jericho to tap out. And then Sonny Ono gets in the ring and has Nagata like to keep the hold on and he's telling him to do it. And so F starts like counting to five and Sonny's like counting along with him. And then when he hits the one emotions to Nagata, Nagata lets go. So he's trying to, I guess, teach him to be ruthless or whatever and stuff like that to get ready for Ultimo Dragon. Then next up we get a video of Raven and he's sitting in a, like a fake bedroom looking set and um, he's sitting on the ground next to a baby crib and this sit um like the room and everything looks exactly like the same room they use for the seven promos later on with the little kid in bed and seven or gold dust in his seven character outside the window that's super creepy that I, every time i see i just get like nightmares almost but he's sitting in the room and he's of course talking about just whatever he talks about and he's uh saying how his earliest memories are of being alone and stuff so him being a loner even though that doesn't make sense here in a minute and from there we go into our next match of gold Goldberg going against Scotty Riggs and so again Goldberg going on his streak or whatever and as the match is starting out they end up showing Ravenson at ringside and he shows him and he's of course sitting with Saturn and then there's someone else now but they the 
commentary doesn't know its name, um, the guy's name, and I could, I had no clue who he was, but I was just saying now he's got two people when he just had a thing about being alone or whatever. Um, but in the match, uh, Scotty Riggs ends up getting in some offense, so it's obviously not just a squash match. They're still not doing that at this point. It's like an actual match or whatever. Um, then at one point, Scotty Riggs ends up jumping over the top rope onto Goldberg, who's standing on the floor, but Goldberg catches him and then lifts him into a press and drops him onto the guardrail, which then leads back into the ring where Goldberg ends up hitting the jackhammer and gets the pin. And so they say this is win number four, even though by the matches I've seen, it's only number three. But he, you know, could have had a match at some point or else or whatever on like Saturday, WCW Saturday night or something. But for Nitro, this is number four three but they say number four and after that we go into a nitro party ad and then immediately after that attic has the nitro girls dancing on the ramp leading into hour two which kicks off with the tag match of scott hall and six taking on the steiners coming out with dead dibiase so again this is for the tag team titles and of course as soon as scott hall and six get in the ring scott hall does a pull of the crowd and everyone of course says or yells whatever that they're here to see nwo and then the Steiners come out, and as they're getting into the rings, Hall and Six start attacking them. But the Steiners are able to reverse it, and um, they end up throwing both of them out of the rings. So the Steiners are, have the upper hand to start. Um, then at one point in the match, uh, Six ends up going for his Bronco right on Rick Steiner in the corner. But um, as he Six is running up to land or whatever, Rick ends up getting his foot up, so hitting Six in the crotch. Um, Scott Hall, or Scott... Steiner ends up doing a double underhook power bomb onto Scott Hall. Too many Scots going on here. And then the Steiners end up getting six up and hitting the Steiner DDT. So it's where one of the Steiners has six up on their shoulders and then the other one is up on the top rope and ends up just doing a big DDT off of a double team DDT. And then the ref counts for three, but Scott Hall ends up pulling the ref out of the ring as he's hitting the three so it doesn't count or whatever. And so he's messing with the referee out in like the entrance ramp area or aisleway. And as he's doing that, Larry Zabisco ends up coming out and it kind of like chases Scott Hall back to the ring. But as he's heading back towards the ring, Scott Steiner ends up grabbing a hold of him, thrown into the ring, where Rick ends up hitting a bulldog off the top rope onto him, and then the Steiner, um, get the pin off of that and Larry Zabisco ends up coming in the count to three making the Steiners the new tag team champion so it's no longer like the NWO but of course they're saying whatever you know that Zabisco is not the referee so it doesn't count or whatever but that'll come up later and that goes into another Nitro Girl segment this time they're dancing on like platforms out in the crowd and so they do this a couple times um but it's new that I've seen and so they're doing that now and that goes into our next match of Dean Malenko versus Rey Mysterio Jr. and so I thought it was funny um so once again Rey gets in the ring he does some pose or whatever then gets out of the ring or he takes his mask off and goes out of the ring to give it to a kid and so he goes up to a kid and um starts to like put the mask put the mask onto the kid but as soon as like he's starting to do that the kid like grabs the mask out of Ray's hand and just starts holding it back out to him like trying to give it back to him and I just thought it's funny but the dad ends up taking the mask and then and like holding on to it or whatever because I just thought it's funny that the kid did not want the mask at all and so of course in this mask match with Rey Mysterio and Dean Malenko. There's a lot of good moves and everything going on here, but obviously it's a lot of stuff. I have no clue what the names are or anything, so I can't tell you all that they did. But at one point, Rey ends up hitting his finisher move of the springboard Hurricane Rana, which he then um, obviously gets into a pin on Dean Malenko, but as he's getting the pin, Eddie Guerrero ends up running out to the ring, and he runs in and just grabs a hold of Rey's mask and pulls it off, so Rey gets the mask, and so he immediately, you know, starts trying to cover his face, and because of that, he lets go of the hold, or the pin, or whatever, which allows Dean Malenko to get up and put the Texas Cloverleaf onto Rey Mysterio to get the win. Then we have a little promo video thing of DDP and he's in the power plant so there's a lot of um, like wrestlers in the background working out and there's a ring and stuff. And so he's just cutting a promo and he's uh, talking about the match with Macho Man at Halloween Havoc and stuff. There's not really much else to it, he's just talking about um, stuff but it didn't really have any meaning or anything just you know pretty much saying that he's gonna beat Macho Man. Then from there we get another Mean Gene interview in the ring with Roddy Piper and Piper mentions talks about you know the tag match earlier and he's saying that um, Zabisco has become a sanctioned official in, prepar or in preparation for 
the match at Halloween Havoc, so he did that like a week or so ago or something, I think they say. And so because of that, the, his decision stands, and so the Steiners are the new tag team champions. And after that, Eric Bischoff and Macho Man Randy Savage ended up coming to the ring, and they're saying, you know, that Piper is responsible for Randy's neck or whatever, and he has the neck brace on. And so they, um, Randy starts to like come at him like he's gonna fight him and stuff, so Piper ends up taking his belt off around his, um, kill and starts wrapping around his hand, getting ready for Right, getting ready to fight and as he's doing that doing a stare down and everything the nwo what i'd like to call b team end up running out to like help back up eric bischoff and they surround him and get ready to attack him but as they get ready to do that sting comes down the ramp and he's walked to the ring and he gets up into the ring and is standing next to Roddy Piper. And you can kind of tell as he's walking to the ring that it's not the real Steen. Because you can tell the hair's fake and everything. But um, he stands stand next to Piper like getting ready to fight with the NWO. But then he grabs a hold of Piper and starts attacking him and stuff with the bat and everything. And then he takes the stuff off and it's actually Hulk Hogan. And so the old NWO just fight with Piper and pretty much destroy him and everything. After that we then have a video on the Flair and Kurt Henning feud so just like showing what has happened between them with the war games or the yeah war games match and stuff and then that goes into our next match of Scott Norton coming out with Buff Bagwell and Vincent and they're take he's taking on Ray Trailer. so towards the beginning of the match Buff Bagwell ends up causing a distraction which allows Scott Norton to get the upper hand and then at one point in the match which really has nothing to do with it Billy Kidman comes walking down the ramp and he walks out to ringside and jumps the guardrail and starts sitting with Raven at ringside so like I said I don't know why they don't put it in stuff that you know has more connection with that but he does that then um at one point ray trailer or ray as i'll call him ends up sliding out of the ring and does a slap to scott norton who's like laying on the bottom rope and as he and after he does that he starts fighting with vincent and then um he gets back in the ring and buff bagwell gets up on the apron to cause a distraction and then vincent's distracting the ref and so buff throws the can of spray paint into scott norton and then scott norton hits um ray with it as um, Ray turns around from being distracted by Buff and so um, Norton's able to get the cover on Ray for the pin and then the NWO or the three members or whatever just start attacking Ray and they um, flip him over of course and spray NWO on his back. From there we get a match of Alex Wright taking on Disco Inferno for the TV championship um, and so as soon as Disco hits the ring Alex Wright starts attacking him and so like it, it's so early and stuff that they're both still wearing their jackets that they each wear so they're both still wearing that early on. At one point the crowd starts chanting a gay slur at Alex Wright which I won't say it's nothing I mean I don't think it's super horribly bad but still not very appropriate and then at one point Jacqueline ends up coming out and of course she's after Disco and like yelling at him and stuff and he's yelling at her to go away and leave him alone and of course he's distracted by that and Alex Wright ends up getting a roll up on him but Disco is able to roll through and ends up getting the pin on Alex Wright and he actually gets the pin so the three or whatever and so Disco ends up winning and as it gets out you know Jackie's again confronting him and he's like just leave me alone and he goes to the back and that's just how it ends. We then get the Nitro Girls dancing once again out in the crowd and then that leads into our main event for the night which is Kurt Henning taking on DDP and this is for the US Championship. Um, So towards the beginning of the match DDP ends up spinning his gum into Kurt Henning's face and I don't know if it went in his mouth right because I saw his Kurt spit so I don't know if it's just because the gum hit him in the face or if it went in his mouth or something I don't know but as the match gets started there's headlocks that are held on for a long time by both guys like they switch it out and stuff and so it's kind of really boring at that point but then all of a sudden there's a commotion or whatever and it goes like to the ramp area and Ric Flair's on the or in the highway trying to get to the ring to get after Kurt Henning and the security guys are holding him back and that's noticed by Kurt Henning and so with that DDP's able to get the roll up on him and so he's pinning him and stuff and Flair hits the ring right as the referee um hits the three or gets to them right as they hit the three and so DDP wins or whatever because of the three and then Ric Flair chases Kurt Henning out of the ring and then to the back area or whatever and the ref and as DDP celebrates with the championship the ref comes up and takes the bell back saying that there was no actual pin because rick of rick flair interfering on the before the pin got finished and so it goes to commercial and then comes back and we see the referee coming out with piper walking down the aisle or whatever and piper's gonna make a decision and so as when piper gets in the ring he grabs a hold of dp's hands and holds it up in the air showing that dp was the winner and as that's happening hulk hogan hits the ring and um they notice or whatever and so they both start attacking him but then the rest of the nwo comes running out or all of the nwo and they start helping hogan and they're able to get the upper hand and as this is going on macho man starts doing a bunch of elbow drops onto dd 
PP and Piper and stuff. So it's showing that his neck isn't injured enough where he can't do his elbow drop. Um, then Hogan takes his belt off and starts whipping Piper and DDP with it and stuff. And then all of a sudden there's commotion up in the crowd. And we look towards one of the like entryways, you know, to the stands. And there's a sting up there. And so he starts coming down the whatever to the ring. And then all of a sudden multiple sting start popping up around the arena. And they're all walking to the ring. They're coming through the entrance, through the um, crowds and everything. It's just all over the ring. Stings are showing up. And of course you can again tell they're all fake stings. And as they get into the, or like start to get up on the apron or into the ring and stuff. Then you just beat them down and they all get sent out. Of course uh, most of them don't even make it to the ring before their hair comes off. Because I know as some are walking through the crowd, you can see people pulling the wigs off and stuff. But they're just guys with wigs and masks on of Sting. But then uh, a couple Stings end up coming to the ring. Like three of them come down the entrance or whatever. And they get in the ring and so then NWO beats them down. But I forget who it is, but they, I think it's Buff Bagwell, ends up hitting a Sting. And it doesn't do anything to him. Or Sting like no sells it. And then they kind of like Buff like freaks out like why didn't that take him out. And so Sting hits the Scorpion Death Drop onto Buff from that. And then he gets up and pulls the wig off and a mask so again it looked like he was even was even a fake sting but it pulls the mask off and the wig and you can tell it's the real sting and because of that the NWO ends up clearing out of the ring and so that leaves Piper and Sting and the standing tall in the ring and Piper has the WCW title again and he's swinging around his head as he did last week and the NWO just all leaves and is standing on the ground outside the ring and that's how Nitro ends. So I think especially with that ending there that Nitro was a lot more interesting and better i mean they were about the same to me but i think that indy gives nitro a little bit of the upper hand so i would give the win to nitro this week but that's going to be it for this week of October 13th, 1997 raw number 229 and nitro 109 again they were both pretty decent episodes i mean they weren't bad um, but I thought Nitro was a little bit better this week. So once again, if you enjoyed this video or episode, be sure to leave a thumbs up for me. Leave any comments that you have down below. And don't forget to follow and subscribe on iTunes or Apple Podcasts and, Sound and or SoundCloud. So if you want to listen to a podcast, actual podcast version of this, or you can watch the video at youtube.com slash awesome nerd show. Again, this is the Monday Night Rewind podcast. So especially there on YouTube, you can leave a comment and subscribe to never miss an episode every weekend. But do all that for me, and we'll see you next time.